Hey guys, what's up? Okay, you guys have been asking for this for quite some time now. Um, ever since I, and actually even before I did this, but it's been coming in more recently, when I started talking with Scalagram about differences, you know, in the Chinese technique of using swords like these, many of you guys have been asking for more stuff on how I use this, or, well, how the Chinese use this. Um, and finally, thanks to getting some free time in who knows how long, this is my only day off this week, so I decided to use it in a fortuitous way, and I decided that this is the perfect moment to actually show you some of the techniques that are used with this thing. In particular, one of the defensive maneuvers that they seem to really like with this sword. Um, here to demonstrate this with me is my good friend Nick. You might have noticed a couple of times I mentioned a Western swordsman that I know who was really, really good and kept me on my toes. This is that guy. Um, my sword technique really started to mature after I bumped into him. Even though he doesn't really practice the Chinese sword arts, he's just really, really fanatical about sword arts, period. And he'll pick up, like, even though his focus is on Western arts, particularly the rapier and the longsword, he just studies everything. Like, he will research and look at different techniques and try to look at, you know, similarities. This is why he liked bumping up with me a lot, because our differences in technique helped us to research our arts further. And in fact, if it wasn't for the Western stuff, I don't think I would have been able to fully appreciate just what this does. Well, um, no. Do you want to introduce yourself, or...? Not really much to say. Uh, my name is Nick. I've been teaching people assorted sword techniques for what, 12 years now. If it has an edge or a handle, I can make it go. And that's why I try to teach people to do a very general, very encompassing style. Yeah. So, unfortunately. She's an excellent teacher. Yep. You know, my wife in the background, she's just had to be there. This is in my living room. I was going to do this outside, but it's very icy out there. So, yeah, and don't, yeah, we're just going to have to do it in here. So. This is a stopgap. I'll come back when the weather's better. And then we can probably show some toys. Stuff. And it'll be good. But we'll be able to show the, you know, what I wanted to show and off. Film it if you want. Yeah. So, what am I showing this time? Um, this kind of goes back to something that I posted up, a comment I posted up under um, one of Skull's older videos. And it was on the whole edge blocking versus flat blocking. And in that comment, I mentioned that when the Chinese use this weapon, one of the things they really like doing is letting the blade slide off, the opponent's blade slide off this blade. And he was like, you know, I want to see that sometime. And some of you guys were, you know, mentioned to me through PMs or whatever, really. Well, we're going to do it today. So I'm going to show it to you in a different context. We're not just going to be talking about sliding blades off, but it will be a lot of that. This is really on, an, on another technique that I want people to understand, and it's guiding the blade. When the Chinese use this weapon, I keep saying the Chinese is they all use it. Like, the Kung Fu way I've noticed in using this sword, the Dian, they don't like parrying all that much. And when I say parrying, I'm using it in the Western sense of knocking the blade out of the way. This is not to say that you don't see that in Chinese martial arts, but I see little of that, at least in the research I've done and seeing all the different ways of seeing people use this sword. The one thing I don't see that much of is just knocking the blade out the way and then coming in. I've seen it with other weapons. You definitely see it with a staff. I've seen it with a saber sometimes, but generally with this weapon, they tend to be a little bit more light with its use. And they really don't like flashing this against metal if they don't have to. And if they do, then they want it to be as efficient and as minimal as possible. So, today we're going to be demonstrating this with my two old school Hanwei Dian. My, you've seen this one before. In my last video that I did sort of stuff is the one been before. That's my older one. I'm letting him use that one um, because it's not only because it's another Chinese sword, but it's he's used to rapier type stuff and this kind of suits him, even though. I need to put up another video where I rant about this and I said I was going to put it before, that this is not a rapier. Don't, I know this is a thinner looking blade, but Hanway was being stupid. It's not a rapier. No, no, I will attest <laughs> proper gym. It's not a rapier in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so you, you can cheat your sword and we can start. And like I said, they don't really like doing, like many times in, you know, let's say Western fencing arts or other fencing arts, when an attack's coming in, they will tend to, you know, try to knock the blade out the way. You know, just 
playing, and, and not like, they're not trying to use brute strength. I mean, I'm not going to say that. I've, I've been up against too many Western swordsmen to, to say that that's what they do. Um, but generally, there's that kind of knock out the way, right? And then as, you know, you get out the way, you use proper footwork to come in. Chinese don't really like doing that too much with this weapon. The main thing they want to do is step out the way. So if he's coming in with that same attack, they want to do that. I don't know if you can see that. I'll well, slow it up. Let's, let's rotate it around to it. They want to use footwork and anticipate nice. the attack and come in. See? That's what they want to do. But it takes a while to learn that type of sensitivity with your opponent where you're able to relate, like as Bruce Lee says, relate to, relate to. And then you know you're able to relate with your opponent. It takes a while. So there is going to be blade on blade contact sooner or later. So what do you do? With this thing, they're going to guide the blade out of the way. When the sword comes out, they want to kind of suggest that it go elsewhere. Notice I am not knocking it out of the way now. This is not a hard parry. This is just like, well, I know you want to come here, but how about you go over there instead? That's the thing, and it's just very light, and it's just enough so that I'm able to get out the way and come in. And by the way, yes, they do use this back cut motion sometimes if they have to. That's why it's double edge. edge. Why it's double edge. There's a lot of this in Chinese sword arts, a lot of backward cuts. A lot of people don't understand that, so this is used to that. They don't know that you can do that and then come back that way. So, you, you, but we're not going into that. We're going into the guiding. There are four basic guiding motions that I have seen. And those of you who um, are alert enough will see that two of the ones I'm going to show you, the latter two, are actually part of a general motion you've always seen. And this could help you to then decipher certain forms you've seen. But the most basic one I've seen in guiding a blade of the way, just subtly so it goes elsewhere, is one that I um, talked about before. And now i got a proper person to show it to me. It's this one. Remember this? This is for guiding the blade out of the way. That same common cut. See where it goes. You can do it like, you know, medium speed just to show people how effective it actually is. I kind of did that wrong, but as you can see, it... Try it again. See? Notice, however, that's the one I had to alter it. I, I, I was standing here because I wanted to demonstrate the technique first, and I was going to ask you guys if you see what's wrong, but he already kind of demonstrated one of the things, and the way he just kind of clangs. See, I have, to do, I have to do this. Footwork is fundamental in Chinese martial arts, and martial arts in general. This technique really only works if you move. When I stood here, well, for one thing, you notice that kind of clang, right? Now, for one thing, you're biting to edge to edge, unless I happen to do that, right? And even then, that's a little too dangerously close, right? And even if he slides it out the way, right? He slides it out the way. As I'm about to come in, I'm just going to disengage up. I see? So you want to be out of the way of that. And this is where footwork comes in. The proper footwork for this is to step in the sort of the opposite direction, kind of follow. So even if he can try to disengage, I'm still over here. Arm check. And then, of course, run through. Just this way. And by the way, when you run through with this, it's not just this. Don't forget the waist. Um, same thing with the other side. On the other side, you really have to move it because this position is nice and strong. This one is not so strong. Just imagine you're facing a heavy two-handed attack and your arm is here. The only way this would work is if you're holding this like that, which Chinese martial arts did use two hands, but this is a one-handed weapon. Okay, you can choke up if you want to, but really, look at the look at the hilt here. This is just enough, you know, maybe a little bit of space with this in a pinch, but then you don't got that leverage that you really need with a two-handed weapon with a longer handle. This is one hand. He's coming in with an attack. One. If I'm just standing here, I can already feel the pressure on my wrist here. I mean, I could try to go against it, but this is not a weapon made for going strength to strength. This is a finesse weapon. So he's coming in with that attack. Use footwork. Use footwork. And notice my left hand keeps him in check. That's what all those, a lot of people don't seem to understand this about Chinese sword stuff, by the way. When you're mostly doing motions like this, this is not just here for decoration. The reason why you see it doing all these weird motions is the left hand is partnering up with the right to do things. And in this case, it's the reason why I, you know, here and then here is to check the other guy's arm. I mean, I'm already past him. He's already 
here, why wouldn't I make sure that that arm can't come back while this is coming in this direction? See? But notice, again, this technique works. And I'm not parrying that. I'm just, go over there, please. Sort of like a, um, um, a temporary shield. In a certain moment in time, this became a shield. And boom. Cuts like that. Next one is a little tricky for some people to figure out how to use. And that's for lower left. All right. Now, usually if they see something below, people freak out and they go, oh, shit. Right? But you don't have to freak out. Tax coming in, remember your footwork. If you're going to the right, step to the right. You go to the left, if it's commonly on my right hand, I'm going to do if you're cutting to my right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Step to your left. Notice what I just did. I'm having so much trouble showing this. I know, this short room. No, no, this? no, it's the not follow. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you see this? Remember, you, you see this all the time. <laughs> now you see the, the actual what its purpose is. It's a deflect and then cut. So anything coming in, even lunges, depending on it. This is going to be kind of hard to show. Well, even lunges were coming in there, and I haven't seen any of this. Absolutely. Well, that's the Spanish style. Yeah. They do the same thing. So again, he's coming in, and then when you see that lunge, you don't want to get hit. You just want to guide the weapon out the way. You think, well, he's going straight on. So actually, with that, I would be slightly different. Okay. Do, do you want to straight at you? Yeah, straight at me. Again, all I did was guide it out the way just enough so that the tip, and let's turn so that you can see what I did. I don't know if you saw. After I got it out the way, I just simply go over here and just one up the arm. Opens up. It's a beautiful thing. Just like that. And I didn't have, notice with all these techniques, there's not a lot of effort in terms of physically exerting myself in order to stop the move from coming in. There's none of this. Now, that's not there. That all, everything is just over there, please. You just want to do just enough to get it there so you can concentrate on your attack having most of your strength. You want most of the power of your, of your motion going into your attack. You want it to mostly go into your attack. You don't want to be like, <laughs> you're wasting energy. At least, you know, that was their concept in using martial arts. They don't like wasting a lot of energy on stuff that they don't need to do. So in the case of this weapon, you're just going to guide it out the way. Especially since, compared to a lot of other weapons in Chinese martial arts, this thing's not that heavy. I mean, they're not this ridiculously light either, like less than a pound. Chinese gin were around two pounds. You know, I, I'm, the lightest I've seen for an antique is close to a pound, but even then it's ill for the shorter ones. A weapon like this, if you see it about this long, it should be around two pounds. At the most, maybe two pounds, five ounces or so. I've seen a couple of modern makers make this around three pounds this long. That's fucking ridiculous. That's too heavy. Um, but around two pounds, that's you know, that's nice and decent because you want it to be maneuverable so that you can do things like he's coming with, I don't care, just any type of attack. I don't know. You just want to be able to move it when you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Man. Yeah, I, I do something cool on that flips off camera. All right. We'll try it again. <laughs> you just want to be able to. Use footwork to go where you need it to go. I'm glad it has no edge. It's so hot. That's you know, the best. You just want to be able to guide it where he, he was trying to make over motion. And I'm just guiding it where so I need it to go. I'm not fighting him. I'm just like, you might want to go here. Just, 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 just a suggestion. I mean, first I'm suggesting to you, can you please not fight me? And then you want to fight. So, well, can you at least aim your attacks elsewhere? Be nice enough to let me kill you. That's nice. I don't know if you guys saw that one. I'll do it slow. This is actually one of my favorites, and I've had to learn this one against him. I'm fond of the hanging parry. It's very simple, and I got, and the only reason why it works is because you're, it's, you know, the tax coming in, and I'm like, no, can you please just go over there? And that's the fun thing I like, is I actually, when I'm going here, I can just simply just do that and that. Stabs I, I and thrusts. completely off camera. Stabs and thrusts. Even if he tries to move it that way, it's very easy to just, and while you're still moving, while you're still moving, and again, footwork is key. You can't see my feet, no, which you could, but footwork is key. That's why I go into my Bagua steps. And Bagua stepping can really help when you're trying to guide your weapons around. You know? He and I faced a crazy show time ago, so he knows, like, proper responses. <laughs> <laughs> um... But that's, if you notice, again, it's, it looks very light and it looks very dainty. We can assure you it's not. Well, in 
actual combats, not. Did you want to say anything, Ryan? Because it looks like you're about to say something. Other couple things I want to comment on. Sure. One, when you are guiding out, mm -hmm. what people may not realize, and I'd love for them to see, because you really have to feel it. The blade, it doesn't actually bite and let it dings, but it bites in that it takes the, it literally draws the sword out. It's a very strange sensation to somebody who's used to more Western styles where when if you throw a shot at my arm, I'm slow. Okay, just stab or stab. Stab. I'm going to hear any blade to blade contact is sliding down yeah. towards the guard. Having your blade drawn from your hand is a very strange sensation. It's awesome, and readily do I use it against people who don't expect it, but it's something that needs to be commented on. Yeah. And it's something that takes Practice. It's a sensitivity thing. You're not going to be able to get it on your first try. Trust me. Oh, God, trust me. My gut, you know, all the hard time sticks of me jamming into here. Some of them from him, too. This comes from hand to hand. And in this section, I actually, this just came to me now, so I'm going to be burning up part of this. We actually discussed what we were going to do beforehand. But even on hand to hand, they understood the ability to draw in an attack rather than just, you know, just, yeah! This I was going to save for another video, but you'll see a small sneak peek here. This motion. Straight shot coming in. That motion. That motion. See? Exact same principle. All I did was this. I did not... <clears throat> no. I just... It does listened. not take yes. a lot of force to kill someone. It really doesn't. We're, we're much more fragile than TV lets on. No. So, but notice, this is... I'm not... You know what I mean? I'm just... This is a Korean power arts. This is, this is something you know, else. It's just, and I'm, again... Bam. I figured they should see it bam, from both sides. Bam. That's it. You know, I'm not, I'm not... I don't have to do a whole lot of craziness. Or even... I'm going to do a slightly different parry, but it's on the same uh, Do you motion. have a reference, or do you want to just trick Just do something. Again... And actually, this is... You're going to crack up. Go with this, this I'll go with a straight shot. I love that. See, this is what I did with the sword. It, and that's it's it's an extension. Yeah. And he can tell you, as ridiculously weak as this looks, his arm's over here. It's just, I mean, it's it, I know it looks weak as hell, and I know it looks like we're acting in front of you, but I can show you. It's because we get not by movies. It's, there is power to that, even though it looks like a slightly weak technique. Remember in the last video when I was showing sword basics and I kept talking about the use of the waist? That's hey, what I'm well, doing here. Watch if you can see the motion. Everybody's focused on this. Everybody, for now, ignore this. What happens? His, his waist starts. The motion, if you're throwing a proper punch, it's starting at the waist. It's coming straight out. What he's doing is he is punching with his elbow. This is the distraction. This is almost irrelevant because the force comes from the elbow and forearm, and then it precocks the counter. And I mean, yeah, now I'm talking about the power of the blow, but what I really wanted you guys to notice for in for the in the context of this video is once again, I'm guiding his hand to a slightly different direction. It was gonna come here. But I'm like, no, I'd rather, you know, you go over there. Oh, you just happen to go where my other hand happens to be. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, it's... Nothing so simple like a face. Same principle applies to this. Remember, martial arts, whether it's weapons or whatever, they relate to each other. And in fact, they say that in Chinese martial arts, your art's not complete unless you're able to transfer your hand skills to weapons and vice versa. A lot of Chinese martial arts actually descend from the weapons, not the other way around. They just teach you the hand-to-hand -hand stuff first because it's easy for you to learn that stuff and figure out how your body is supposed to move without having to worry about getting killed and getting cracked upside the head with a staff or something. So, guiding motions out the way. It's just suggestions. Tie you up. You see, now you're over there. You don't mind if I come back here. Or, one of my favorites, and he's seen me mess up some of his students a lot, with just simply that. Come up. Most people don't know how to deal with an attack coming up. Middle road. This parry up. But once again, this move does not really work too well if I stay here. He could have killed me before my sword even came right back up. All it took was a lunch. I'm just like, eh. oh shit! <laughs> you gotta move. You have to move. See, you still got me there. You have to move though. It always takes knowing the proper way to. <laughs> sorry, to sorry, you tell. You telegraphed that one too yeah, I much. Yeah, telegraphed that That's one. That's why I was worried because. But I'm just, you know, you, you gotta 
If you died, come in, come in. You don't, you, you have to, very, and it's a hard way to learn how to fight because we're used to just get the shit out of my way. Letting it guiding out the way. It's much calmer. Yeah, it's a lot simpler than that. And that was a bad response by me, by the way, but I just, I'm just demonstrating like just slight motion. You just, you just, just out the way, just out the way. And I know we're just demonstrating here, we're just kind of farting around, but I, I want you guys just to understand just the concept of it. Just understand the concept of it. You're just guiding it out the way. You just simply, you just please. And then, of course, there's no reason why you can't. <laughs> Sorry, we played too much. That's me being bad, because I expect the foot. Yeah. But let's just say you happen to be in the heat of battle, and you just happen to see a move coming that you did not expect. And you're like, oh, shit! And the weapon comes. You're just, you're just trying to block. This can still be a way to guide. And this is one thing I like about Chinese martial arts. It's all about adaption. Fold. Just fold. You can still guide weapons out of the way. And this motion, which is to me like a rather common, oh no, can still be used to guide with just one alteration. He's coming in again. He just doesn't like my head. Now I guided it and I just stepped over here. Now I can go that way. Yes, I got options. But let's say he's smart. But uh, again, I just want you to see, I'm going to stop let's for a second. Smart. He comes in this way. Before I said, no, again, I just stepped over here. Or I can go even sneak here. Do it again. Give me foot. Believe it or not, this has a purpose. Oh. By crossing my leg, it guarantees that my next shot gets me in much further than it would be with a regular step. So that's, and the hidden foot also is there to throw somebody off guard. They usually can see this one, this leg. The back foot, they're not expecting that this suddenly changes things. Just by crossing my foot behind myself and then coming in. And by the way, this can come in to point through him or, you know, go to the knee or to go to the waist and then to the neck. There is another weirder follow-up to that. Sorry. Anytime he says weirder. <laughs> I this one I do not get. I do not suggest beginners try to do on their first try, or on their second, or on their fourth, or their twentieth. But it, it is a traditional response, and it does work. But it's not. It's this is the move. I was not going to show this one at first because I'm expecting a certain guy in Canada to start gritting his teeth. But I think just because of that, I am going to show it, and he's my witness. Because I pulled this off against a couple of students, it does work. But this is not a move I recommend you try to throw in your repertoire unless you really know what you're doing. Same position. Cat's coming in. Parry. Ah, this actually went better than I thought because you can actually go right through there and then turn and go here. Let's do it again. Cross step in here. And notice what I did. I didn't just let me spin around and look cool in the movie. I'm still checking his arm. What he's doing, again, the momentum is using my energy against me. I've thrown a lot of juice, especially because I'm, I'm deliberately throwing this as a very heavy strike. I'm extended. He's just, as soon as he makes contact, he's forcing my weight this way. That way I don't have any point to pivot off of to counter. Yeah, Unless that's the whole used point. To countering the Madera. I'm trying to get him like get the hell away from me so that my attack hits you in an angle you're not expecting, and you're not expecting an attack there. Right. Doing that spin gets me there. See, and even though for a split second I'm doing the spin, and this is something I want to impart to certain people who are like, you can't do spins and moves. You wouldn't be able to throw people with certain throws if you didn't turn your back against your opponent in certain motions. And not only that, but if you are sensitive enough to know where your opponent is at any time. It doesn't matter if for a split second you get your eye off of them. If you know where they are and if you know where their limbs are in that split second, you're still keeping them in control. Matt? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, the answer to what you're saying of demonstrating it is the exact same motion. If I punch... Mm -hmm. Well, let's actually do it that weird way. Sort yeah, of. that's what I'm saying. I want, I, want the, I want them to see it because suddenly, because you're going... Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> And one thing I like about your style, and a lot of people don't get, there are two or three ways to do anything, but everything you do negates me in transit. And that's one thing I wish people would realize. They train to fight one dude. 
My whole life I've been in hundreds of fights because I'm a little guy with a big mouth. <laughs> never, well, me, and almost never, was it one guy. <laughs> it's, that was going to end it after he's talking about it. So what you have is he's going to do this, boom, okay, now watch. He's, he's done horrible things to me. I'm down, mm -hmm. and, and he's up. still going after the next SOB in the line. Right. I'm not just engaged, and this is, to go over a slight tangent, this is one of my biggest problems with a lot of guys who train in sport-oriented arts to talk about how supreme their fighting is. And this is no um, offense against the MMA guys, because personally, I think that, I, I'm going to be giving you an honest opinion, and I've actually given this before. The MMA guys, I think that right now, at this point in time, as far as true fighting arts is concerned, yeah, they're on top. Most people these days practicing martial arts don't remember what it means to actually use it to hit a guy. These guys, all they do is train to learn how to hit and be hit. So, yeah, if you just throw your punches and kicks in the air, or, you know, 24 hours a day, and meanwhile this dude is on the mat, <laughs> who do you think's going to win? Having said that, one of the flaws that I see in, in people say, we're supreme. They train against one guy. Ground fighting. Real Ground life fighting. doesn't go that way. And now you're beginning to understand why the Chinese arts do what they do, why the fist arts do what they do. You cannot spend too much time on one guy. You're getting jumped. Especially if you, if, you, if there's any a, t a time you got to pull your weapon out in the middle of civilian altercation and it's not a duel. There's three or four of them that come on. Think about, for those of you who fought in real life, how often has it been that, okay, put it put it, it's just you and this one guy and his friends didn't jump in? Really? I haven't even been in that many fights, and I remember that. That guy has friends. Shit. And it usually it's the whole thing about, like, the, the only way it doesn't become this whole thing about them jumping your ass is if you guys, okay, come on, let's let's, let's, let's hash them out. And then you got that ring of people and everyone's going, fight, 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 fight. Which breaks it's, down as soon as it's convenient, let's yeah. be honest. And, and that's more playground stuff. But when you actually like, think about it, you're a civilian, and all right, I'm, I also need to straighten this out a bit before I go any further with these videos. Unlike many of you guys who train in your Western sword arts, the arts that I train in, I consider civilian martial arts. They, I mean, one of the martial arts I've practiced is more kind of military-ish. But even then, like, like I practice Bagua Zhang. Bagua Zhang was an art that was used a lot by bodyguards, by guys who really had to worry about keeping motherfuckers alive. Excuse my language. But it's still a civilian art. So things like cut how to deal with armor, how to deal with chain mail, using heavy mace weapons, that's not really in my repertoire. I like studying that stuff and other stuff because I find it fascinating. And several of you guys have really clued me into some really cool stuff. No Man Chaos, I'm looking like at you. Um, a couple other people in the comment section who I cannot pronounce your name, such as an R. Um, you guys really like showed me some really cool stuff about like fighting and warfare and made me think about that type of stuff. But my stuff is based on fighting people wearing clothes. Even my ancient stuff is, you know, unless uncertain well, except for certain things like some of my people on was made for somebody wearing armor against armor, and that's where you get these type of strikes from. But for the most part, my stuff is civilian on civilian. And so my context thinks in that way. But even with that said, let's just say this was military stuff. Do you really want to be on the battlefield spending too much time in one front of one guy doing this? You want to kill and keep moving. The battlefield is full of people who don't like you. Same thing if you happen to be dealing with, you know, imagine yourself, you know, a, you know, in older times, you're keeping, you're holding, holding a weapon for a reason. You're not, I mean, there were some morons who carried this for decoration, but for the most part, if you're just an average person, you have a weapon, and you're walking down the street with it, there's a reason. And if you're getting jumped, you are not going to be spending time reciting Kung Fu lines, practicing a whole bunch of moves in front of one guy while his friends just stand around like this. They're coming after you. You have to use techniques that will make you deal with this dude quickly enough and move on to the next guy with as minimum effort as possible. One, because you don't want them getting to you before you're ready for them. And two, fighting is strenuous, especially when you're using something in your hand. You get tired. I don't care how many push-ups you can do in a day, you will get tired fighting. You're using a whole lot of different muscles and you're probably not used to it unless you're training every day. And even then, training is tiring. Why? Because fighting is tiring. So when you're dealing with your opponent, you do not want to burn up all that limited energy you have to deal with the engagement. If I'm dealing with him, He's got friends. I need to figure out how am I going to either get the hell out of here quick enough, or I don't see a way out. I gotta kill this guy and then deal with his friends as quickly as possible. 
I don't want to be engaging with this guy for more than two seconds. And even that's too long. You want to, and this is where the guiding comes in. This is where instead of clashing with him, you just let him pass on by to the other world and you go on to the next. You have to know how to deal with them. And for those of you guys who were talking about dual wielding, having this in your hand really helps sometimes, especially when you do the guiding. Because sometimes you can't grab their arm. He's coming in. I'm trying to guide. Get the hell out of the way. Now, let's say I missed his arm. I got blade instead because I was in a hurry. Well, here we go. See? I got my shield. I do plan on doing a video about using this. I've been doing a bit of research on this. I've been looking at the forms and practicing. I've been looking at it's rarely discussed having this in your left hand in Chinese martial arts, but if you really look at certain forms, you can tell it was intended for this to be here. And I do want to do a video on it. Well, there are a lot of elements of that in Japanese martial arts. Mm -hmm. And the Western martial arts actually do a lot of sword and chief. That's why the sword and stick training. Yeah. Well, but it, a lot of times they mistakenly take it as. You know, yeah, it just and it does become this too. I have seen this, but it takes that. That takes time. Yeah, Whereas this I have seen. I prefer. <laughs> um, yeah. Before I end this off, um, I just wanted to show you, like, for those of you who do want to try this, but I am not recommending that you put this as part of your repertoire. Uh, you, I know you people. You're gonna try this. Or Nick gets home again. Here's the key methods you need to know to make this move work. One, you're guiding the weapon out the way, okay? Even when you're doing this step, make sure that you keep this in front of you. Two, what's powering this move is your step and the turning of your waist. Not too much, just enough so that that blade is not going to kill you. So, it's out the way. Third, as soon as you're stepping here, you're turning. At this motion, you better know and you better be able to be sensitive enough to know where this arm is. Now, granted, he's still in mid lunge as I'm doing this, so I have a bit of time. But you want to make sure, okay, I know he's here. And you're keeping this arm level with where his arm is. Again, it takes sensitivity to be able to do this. It, this takes training. Four, do not do this. You're dead if you do. You're doing this. You keep this, the circle, the rotation close and tight. I'll do it this way. Okay, so you can see it a little bit more clearly. You Again, still. doing it slow. Oops, sorry. Coming in. You see how close I keep this? Even like real close to the waist. And if you want to, you can even maybe do this as you're doing it to kind of help with that snap. So as you're doing the turn, you know, I parry and that. That really helps. But notice, again, I'm keeping this close. I'm out of here. You have to be here. That's the only way this is going to work. Those steps I just told me, the only way that's going to work, and even then, most of you guys are going to fail because you've got to be sensitive with your opponent to make it work. I can, because like Mark has come out, I, I teach a variety of styles to a variety of people, and I've watched them then try to imitate Mark, which is amusing because they go, well, he, he fights sort of like you. Well, no one fights like you, it's true. But, <laughs> I, I can tell often mistakes that people who are trying to do this do. And the big one I see, go into the, the, the beginning of the loop. Okay. Now, he keeps telling you, don't hit it hard. What happens is people plaster that. And what's going to happen is, I believe in the yin response. You give me a lot of force. If he plasters that, it's just going to whip it around. And what's going to happen is, I'm not going to do a big force, but he's going to take a slap or a, a blow right to this on his arm. And it hurts. So you have what you, when I was talking about the pull, you can reset. That that pulling motion is the only that's the only thing that's buying him the extra half a beat from tempo from uh, me going, oh shoot, <laughs> you know, flipping around and following through. And once you really get sensitive, that's when you can start doing the things that aren't so obvious with the guiding. Sometimes you don't even have to like go over there or do that. Sometimes it's as simple as, okay, he made it inside. All right, I already checked you. Boom. See? Very nice. I nice already smoke. checked you. That's, and again, that was this motion. You can also like just, just again, just there. You have to know, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. But I to, Anyone who watched this, you'll notice I rolled up my sleeves right before this. This is yeah. because I fought more a lot. So I put the padding where it needed to be. And again, just stepping in. 
I this one again sensitivity. As soon as it touches, switch. Boom. Just that. That could even come from below. He's coming in low. I I wasn't expecting. Oh shit! Again. And this, by the way, works also because even though I'm doing that with what looks like a large motion, keep it tight to your body so you can control where the point goes. But again, it starts with that nice little yin motion. Just guide them. Just, you might want to go over there, honey. Just go over there. Die. You know, just to be on, they're coming to you. Be, as, be kind. Be courteous. Be gentle. Give them a smile on the way to the afterlife. You know, you, you're not there. You're not going to You just guiding them where they need to go. And that's one of the things that if you want to learn how to use this weapon, if you maniacs want to learn how to use this weapon, you have to understand that principle of using the weapon to guide theirs out the way so you can do what you need to do the split second after you've already told them to go over there. That's, if there's any defensive tactic that I would say is key to even approaching the master of this weapon, which I won't say I have, it's learning how to guide their weapon out of the way, how to mix it out of the way, how to, you know, you're not clashing against it. You don't even want to use your, you really don't want to clash their, your blade against their blade at all. But if you have to do it, do it as lightly and as quickly as possible and just push them slightly out of the way or just put this in the way so they happen to go veer off in a different direction and then you just do what you got to do. And that, then just by figuring that out, You'll be able to realize why this weapon's used the way it is, and you'll be able to do some rather wonderfully dangerous things with it. So, I hope that you know the video was you know enlightening in a sense. Again, these I'm not doing this to instruct you guys. This is more demonstrating how it's used. I do not consider myself an instructor to be able to teach people how to use this stuff. I'm still learning a lot of this myself. Um, but I, it's just I wanted to pass it on so you guys can see how it's done um, in a sense of like, just the theory of it, the um, the ideas behind it. I hope it was entertaining enough because I know we goofed up enough doing it. <laughs> so. Well, it had to happen. Pretty much. So, um, you guys have any questions or anything, just leave it in the comment section. I hope it was entertaining enough for you guys. And um, hopefully I'll be able to do this again. Catch you guys later.